to Brother Fred. The title of the message tonight is Fit for the Kingdom. We want to be fit for the kingdom. And, and what does that mean, being fit for the kingdom? We, well, we need to prepare ourselves. That, uh, that indicates there's a preparation uh, that, that we don't just sit around and think we're going to be in the kingdom. We need to prepare for the kingdom. And uh, a woman said something uh, Saturday, uh, which was very interesting to me. She said, and I would say she's around 70 years of age, and she said uh, she had never understood the kingdom, and she, uh, different people had tried to explain to her what the kingdom was, and uh, she just never could understand it, and, and so she asked Jesus, what is the kingdom, mm. and uh, he, he made this simple statement to her. He said, the, there is no sickness and no lack in the kingdom, Amen. and she Amen. said, Oh, I now I understand what the kingdom is. And I'm a different girl. She's about 70, but she's a different girl because she <laughs> understands the kingdom. Amen. And, and that's that's good for all of us to understand. And Jesus just explained it to her in such simple words and simple ways uh, that she knew that uh, bringing heaven on earth, Yes. That's the kingdom. That's the kingdom. And when, if you look back at the heaven, that you will see no sickness there. You'll see no lack, no sorrow, no uh, no grieving, no grieving. And so that's what the kingdom is. It's just bringing heaven to earth. And uh, we all need to find our place in the kingdom, and we need to be prepared to function in the kingdom. Yeah. And that's a different place and a different thing than just. Uh, our local uh, church congregation. So uh, in the kingdom, there is no sickness and there is no lack. And I don't think we can quote anything better than that to say what Jesus said himself to her. And it changed her life. And she began to understand it for the first time in her life. And so what we're going to be doing today is thinking about how can we prepare ourselves to be ready and fit into the kingdom and we find our position in the kingdom how can we be fit for the kingdom you know uh, jesus said in luke uh, uh, that he talked about being fit for the kingdom and i want to share to read these two verses uh, luke chapter 9 verses 61 and 62 and i welcome uh, uh sister mary we we welcome you uh to the group tonight uh, it says, another also said, I will follow you, Lord, but first permit me to say goodbye to those at my house, at my home. But Jesus said unto him, no one after putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Okay, so the things that have gone on in our lives in the past, that's not something we can bring into the kingdom. The kingdom... Uh, like Jesus said, there's no sickness, no no sorrow mm -hmm. uh, in no the lack. kingdom, no lack in the kingdom. And so uh, we need to find out what uh, we need to do, how to train, uh, how to be trained uh, for the kingdom. And uh, Paul uh, has a good statement here in the Corinthians. And I want you to read all these verses. <laughs> And then I'm going to focus on one of them, but I'll let you read all of them. Okay, this is 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. So they do it to obtain a perishable well uh, wreath, but we an imperishable. Therefore, I run in such a way as not to run aimlessly. I box in such a way as to avoid hitting the air. But I strictly discipline my body and make it my slave. Woo, that's good. So that after I have preached to others, I myself may not be disqualified. Okay, so he's talking about perhaps preparing. How can we prepare ourselves uh, to be fit for the kingdom? And 
And he says, it's like an athlete running a race. And we've mm -hmm. all seen uh, athletes running a race and uh, they, they prepare themselves. They are disciplined. Uh, and, and I'll talk more in a moment about what that discipline is. Uh, they are disciplined and, and uh, they prepare for the race. And, and so we want to look at ourselves and think that we need to prepare because we have a race to run. Mm -hmm. And our race uh, is an eternal race and a, a spiritual race. And so it's not just natural, but it's an important race. And, and this verse that I want to focus on is uh, the next one that I want Sherry to read out of the Passion Translation, still from that same passage she was reading. And it's 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 27 out of the passion translation but i train like a champion outlet athlete i subdue my body and keep it under my control so that after preaching the good news to others i myself will not be disqualified oh he trains like a champion athlete to be fit mm. for the kingdom. Well, this is a guy, this is guidance for all of us. Uh, he said in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, he said, you imitate me as I imitate Christ. Yeah, that's exactly what You he imitate says. me as I imitate Christ. And so what was Paul doing? He was training as a champion athlete. That's the way we need to, to train. Now, what uh, prompted this uh, message was uh, last Saturday, uh, uh, Sherry and I had ministered to a group uh, Saturday morning and until after lunch and on uh, Saturday, and then we uh, moved over to another place to minister to another group of people. And boy, in that meantime, I I realized I was tired. Uh, mm. and, and I think about what he said there that uh, uh, he didn't want to be uh, disqualified uh, uh, because somehow he wasn't fit for the kingdom. Well, I don't want to be disqualified after I preached to, to one group and then I was tired mm -hmm. before I moved over. So I, I thought, okay, there's something I need to address in my own life here uh, because I, I, I've enjoyed the morning. I've enjoyed the time with mm -hmm. the people, ministering to the people. It wasn't strenuous. Uh, there was no, uh, no effort as far as I uh, could see. But, but yet, uh, I just hadn't had the energy to come uh, run to another place and start ministering to another group. And I thought, this is an important issue. And I don't think it's just for me. I think it's for all of us. All of us. Uh, we have assignments on this earth. And, and, and I think about children. Children uh, are a real blessing, and we should really get a lot of pleasure out of our children. But there are times we get so... Uh, tied up in what's going on in their lives, uh, that where's the joy? We, we might uh, not have the joy, and we might not have the pleasure uh, in dealing with uh, the situations that our children deal with. And, and the same thing for our work. Well, you know, uh, work is a gift from God, and and uh, we ought to take pleasure in, in uh, doing what God is calling us to do, whatever it is. And And yet, sometimes we just get tired because that continual uh, stress and uh, continual uh, putting our uh, nose to the grind, so to speak, so that we're just continually, continually doing things and, and we're not being refreshed. And so we get tired. And so that's the, basically the issue that I'm going to be looking at today. We can't get tired. We, we, the Bible says a lot about that. Mm -hmm. uh, the, is that don't be weary and well doing. Don't Just be don't. Weary and weary. So you've got to you've got to uh, think about what Paul said. He said, "I train myself as a champion athlete." And when I read that verse, I was so uh, caught by it that, that it was a very important uh, verse. And, and I thought, well, I don't know how a champion trains. I, I better uh, mm. talk to one of my good friends, uh, Robert Jennings. Jenkins. Uh, Jenkins. He lives in uh, California, he and his family. And and uh, he has trained many state champions and many uh, national champions. Last, and his whole family are runners. And I, I heard, mm -hmm. last I heard, uh, he, 
He had uh, 25 individual national championships uh, that uh, that they had won. 25 national championships. So I I thought, okay, Robert. <laughs> is a trainer of champions mm -hmm. and so we talked a few moments ago and i wanted yeah. to tell you some of the things that he told me uh, because we need to know how do you train to be a as a champion athlete to be fit for the kingdom and you don't get tired and you don't let you know there's a verse that jeremiah says uh, uh if you get tired when you're running uh, with the infantry mm -hmm. uh, what's going to happen when the horsemen come yeah, the horsemen. and the horsemen come and they are on the chariots and the horses and and you're going to have to run with them well you know elijah ran with uh, and he outran the chariots and so i, I want to ask you are you uh fit and uh in good shape uh to run with the chariots and the horsemen uh things are going to get uh, uh they're, they're going to get more and more rapid as we go along. And they certainly have in my life. Uh, I see things are just we're continuing to accelerate and we need to be prepared for that. And when our bodies and our minds and our spirits, they all need to be prepared uh, for the things of the kingdom and to be so that we will be fit for the kingdom. You know, it'd just be terrible uh, for uh, things to pass you by and you not be able to keep up with what's going on and what God has in store for you. And so this is an important message tonight. We want to talk about how we can keep ourselves fit. How can we train as a champion athlete? And so I talked with Robert and he and I asked him for guidance on how uh, that we could train as a, a champion athlete to run a race, mm -hmm. to win a race, a national championship, uh, because he had a lot of experience with that. And, and he immediately talked about three D's and discipline. And that's mm -hmm. what this uh, 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 verse had just talked about, discipline. So we, uh, Paul said, I discipline my body. Yeah. And uh, what Robert meant by discipline was a diet, uh, training, uh, sleep, and rest. Mm. And I want to point out that rest and sleep were two different things on his list right. of, uh, of a discipline, a rest and sleep. And so we'll come back to, to those later. Uh, but he told a couple of stories and uh, that, that he teaches the runners to trust to trust God first, to trust themselves and their coaches and the training, a lot about trust. And he said he, he took his uh, uh, runners to uh, a, a place where there was just a flat trail. It was near a river, and so it was just on a, uh, a river bank, and so it was very flat and uh, easy running. And uh, he would take them there at 4 a.m., in the morning in the dark in the dark and he said you could not see your face in front i mean your hand in front of your face and so the, the people had to trust uh they knew their steps they knew their pace they had to trust they had to trust their preparation they had to trust their processing the going through the process mm -hmm. of training uh, for a race and, and so he said that was very important well that's that's like you and me. We have mm -hmm. to trust. See, we're preparing for a race of, that Paul talks about, about here for a, an eternal uh, crown of glory. It also says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Okay, so it's just like that 4 a.m. in the morning. Can you imagine being out there on that race, on that race track, on that mm -hmm. course at 4 a.m. in the morning? In the dark. In the dark, and you couldn't say, but you had to run. You had, this is a time of preparing uh, so that you will be fit for the kingdom. And uh, Robert uh, told a couple of stories uh, about uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth was a freshman that came to him one year, and uh, the older, the uh, upperclassmen had all of the positions filled for the uh, 400 and 800 yard races. That's where she had wanted to race. But he said, if you will trust me and train and do what I say uh, and for the train two mile. 
for two miles. Ooh, now that's a long way. Yeah. A freshman, just a young girl. Uh, and he said, you will be one of the top runners in the state this season. And so she said, uh, she agreed to it. Uh, so she, uh, that was not our preference, but he trained her to run two mm -hmm. miles and they went to state. And uh, while they were at state and she was getting ready to run, the Lord so told my friend Robert, he said, uh, take her watch away from her because she really watches her watch to keep uh, an understanding of her pace, how fast she's going. And uh, she's really tied into her watch. So you take it away from her. And so Robert went down, explained it to the parents that he was one, that the Lord had said, take it away from her. So he went down there and said that the Lord uh, told him to take the watch away. And she cried. Uh, she was so attached to the watch and watching her face and seeing and making sure she was on track and everything. And uh, took it away. But you know, she finished the race 30 seconds she faster, faster than she'd ever run before. And she finished in the top. And she wound up on the platform uh, oh, there at, at the first state, just as Robert had Robert had promised. Uh, if she would follow his instructions and do what he Amen. said, Amen. that he Amen. guaranteed she would finish on the platform that year at two miles as a freshman among upperclassmen. Uh, so that was really a great uh, accomplishment. Uh, but she trusted. She trusted her coach. She trusted her training. She and, trusted the Lord. And she trusted the Lord. And it wasn't about the watch at all. And so she ran faster than she'd ever run. Uh, and so that was one story. Another story, uh, and of course, he had lots of national championships and state championships that he could have talked to, about. But he talked about uh, this girl, Elizabeth, as a freshman. And then he also talked about a... Uh, special needs uh, yeah. student that uh, wanted to run. And so he he had trained the special needs student and they had uh, the special needs and he wasn't, he was slow. He, he wasn't very fast, but it was a way for him to be active and be involved with the team effort and all. And so and he got lost in the woods. And so <laughs> in every race, he'd get lost in the woods uh, because he was so slow. Uh, so far behind all the other runners, he, he wouldn't know which way to go. And uh, they'd have to go out after the race. They'd have to go out in the woods and find him because, because all of the races were on the, on the, uh, in the woods. And, and uh, so they had trained, he had worked hard. And here at the last race, uh, he finished the course. <laughs> <laughs> and he, and Robert he said, the race. It, it said, Robert was so excited. The whole team was excited because Everybody he was crying because he had never finished a race. And here he had, he had finished the race. And, uh, Robert said, it's like, uh, us going, uh, to be with Jesus, uh, that he, he'll say, well done. done. You finished the course, yes. finished the race. And that's what this, uh, special needs student had done. And so he'd really prepared for that and he finished it, finished the course. And that's what we all need to do. We Amen. need to be prepared. We need to be out there. We need to be uh, disciplined and, and determined and have a drive. So, so those were the three Ds, discipline, uh, determined, and drive, that you've got to have that passion. So if you want to be fit for the kingdom, you need to have that drive and that passion uh, that you want to be fit for the kingdom. Now, see, one of the things that I, I want to emphasize uh, is what Robert said about rest. That rest was one of the uh, three of the discipline. And it was a very important. He, he said uh, diet, um, training, sleep, and, and rest. rest. Okay, so he said they would train hard on Monday. Uh, Monday was a hard training day, but Tuesday was a day of recovery. And so they just do light jogging on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday was a day of recovery, light jogging. And so then, then you had to have a rest. There has to be rest. The body has to uh, re be restored, has to restore itself. And, and so this is a part when we're in the kingdom. Of course, 
We're not talking about natural running a natural race, really, but I give you that as a background uh, for the message because really we're talking about a spiritual race, and that's what Paul was discussing there in 1 Corinthians 9, which Sherry read. Uh, he's talking about a spiritual race, and we're going to go for an eternal gold medal, uh, uh, some kind of a, uh, a winner uh, just for finishing the course. And, and this is what we're about. We're, how do you be, become a champion? Well, you have to train mm -hmm. uh, as a champion athlete and to be fit for the kingdom. Now, I want to switch to spiritual things. And, and I want to say, if you're tired, you, you're going to have to challenge that. You, you're, uh, that's what the Bible teaches us. Uh, and so I want Cherry to read a few verses here. Uh, the, the, first of all, it talks about this, just this challenge. If you're weak, what do you do? In Joel chapter 3, verse 10, in the Amplified Bible, it says, let the weak say, I am strong. Okay, so if, you, if you're if you weary, say, you're strong. I am strong. I'm strong. Hallelujah. And, and, and that's what we had to do last Saturday. And so we have to we have to challenge that. We we cannot settle for being tired and unprepared for the kingdom. Amen. We've got to go past that. You know, when you first start uh exercising and training, uh you, you get tired very easy, but you've got to keep pushing and keep pushing yourself beyond that point. And and so we're talking about a spiritual way uh, to challenge uh, being tired. And, and then let's go ahead and read a couple of more verses here, Sherry. Okay, Galatians 6, 9 says, Let not, do not become discouraged in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not become weary. Okay, so he said, don't be weary. <laughs> he didn't give a lot of instructions there. Uh, about how not to become weary, but that's what we're going to talk about in a moment. He just simply said, don't be weary. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be weary. But you can see it's about discouragement. Well, that's that's what uh, Robert had mentioned. He said, you've got to have that drive. You've got to be determined uh, and, and out there and passionate about it. And you can't be discouraged. And so what I'm really talking about today is we cannot go beyond the point of getting tired and b think that we're going to accomplish uh, the kingdom if we just sit there in that realm of being tired all the time. Uh, and so let's go ahead and read another verse here. Sherry. Okay, this is from uh, Revelations 2, 2 and 3. I know your deeds and your labor and your perseverance. This is a letter to Ephesus. The church and that, of Ephesus. And that you cannot tolerate evil people. And you have put those who call themselves apostles to the test. And they are not. And you found them to be false. And you have perseverance and have endured on account of my name and have not become weary. Okay, so what keeps us from becoming weary? Well, endure and persevere by the name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So Amen. here, there's some spiritual truths. And so to, mm -hmm. to have, uh, if you're encountering being tired, if you're encountering being weary, I'm trying to give you some strategies, some spiritual strategies, how to overcome these things. And, and we need to know that we have to persevere and endure, and you do it in the name of Jesus, okay? So now we're going to get down to my final, and I believe this is my most important point uh, from the message tonight, and it follows up on uh, on what Robert had said on the uh, the discipline, and that was sleep and rest and diet and training. And so it's the rest I want to focus on because the Bible says a lot about rest. You know, Jesus yeah. said, coming to me, all you who are labor, labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. rest. So rest is very mm -hmm. important. It's a theme we've talked about uh, several times, but I, I'm approaching it the different way tonight, and I want to talk about rest, that we're going to have to rest. It takes a balance, 
Uh, in the kingdom of God, we have to have a balance. We have to have a good diet. We have to have uh, um, a training. And, we, and so here at Tuesday nights, this is a time of training. Uh, but but it, this is not the only thing. You've got to have that balance. You've got to have a, a diet, a natural diet, a spiritual diet. You've got to have training. You've got to have sleep. You've got to have rest. Okay, so God, see, for Proverbs 11, 1 says, uh, a false balance is an abomination Foundation to the Lord, to the Lord. And, and so we need to have that balance in our life. And, and now, give and, that scripture again. Francis. That's Proverbs eleven one. That that an false, imbalance or false balance. False balance is an abomination to the Lord. And so, what we need to do see, is have balance, and, and that we're rested, and we have sleep, and uh, uh, we have a good diet. And we train, and and we're not training for a natural race. Well, you might be, mm -hmm. but we are definitely in a spiritual race, and so we need to train for that. And there are spiritual ways to train for that. But then we've got to have this rest, and so that's what I want to focus on. Is the last point of the message. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about rest, and so uh, I've got some verses I want Sherry to read. So go ahead and start here with this. Okay, Mark two twenty seven. Jesus said to them, the Sabbath or the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Okay, what he's saying here is this Sabbath rest. Uh, there's a rest for all of us and it will serve you. Yes. No, yes. Oh, it's not about you serving, serving it. the Sabbath rest. And what is the Sabbath rest? Well, God established it early right there in Genesis when he created uh, the universe in six days and on the seventh day he rested and so he set up this week system a system of weeks in which there's six days to work and one day to rest and a lot of people don't abide by that and particularly in this uh, nation people are very busy 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 and that's when you get worn out. That's when you get tired and you get weary when you're busy, 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 and you never stop to rest. But rest is a critical part of a training of a champion mm -hmm. athlete. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. And, and you should not have any less uh, training than a champion athlete because that's the way God sees you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go mm -hmm. down. The Exodus 20. Verses 8 through 11. Now, let me just say that Exodus 20 is really the Ten Commandments. And all nine, the other nine are, are things that uh, we probably agree with. Uh, uh, you'll have no other gods before you. You'll have no idols. Honor your mother and father. Don't commit adultery. Don't commit uh, murder. And, and probably agree with all of those. But a lot of people don't agree with this one mm -hmm. <laughs> one. Uh, which is God's top 10 uh, things for us uh, to do or not to do. And uh, so let's read about the Sabbath rest, about rest. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all that you need to do. But the seventh day <laughs> is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. On it you shall do no work. You and your son are your daughter, your male slave or your female slave, are your cattle or your resident who stays with you. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything that's within them. And he rested on the seventh day. For that reason, the Lord blesses the Sabbath day and makes it holy. Okay, so here is an important concept. He said, rest one day out of the week, rest. Now, this is not about a particular day. It's not about, in our case, mm -hmm. it's not about, well, let's say a Saturday, nor is it a Sunday. It's a day that uh, you work out with the Lord and settle on a day. And it may not be the same day every week. But the point is you need to rest one day out of the a week, one day out of the week. And a lot of preachers, for example, 
Uh, they're very busy on Sunday, so they take Monday off and they rest Monday. And I want to give you a couple of stories. Um, there was a, a man and a preacher uh, that was in a hospital and he was dying. And the doctors told him he was dying. And so he had a conversation with the Lord. And, and he said, uh, Lord, I've served you. And, and why is this happening to me? I'm still a young man. And uh, why, why, why did all this come on me? And, uh, and the Lord said, I didn't do that. You did it yourself. You never rested. You never rested. And he said, that's the problem. I never rested. So what he did, he checked himself out of the hospital. He went home and he, he developed a process of resting, a process of resting. And he lived to be a ripe old age. But he, he was going to die the way he was headed. And that was never resting. Now that is going to apply to a lot of people who don't take time to rest one day of, uh, out of the week, that uh, they just go, go, go constantly. But what happens is their mind uh, is not as sharp uh, and their, their soul is not as sharp and their body's not as sharp as they continue to go, go, go. And so you have to rest. And I know this, uh, my body yeah. uh, needs its rest. Mm. It needs its sleep at night. It needs a good sleep at night. And I can go uh, one night uh, and and let's say I have to get up early the next morning mm -hmm. to, to take a flight. Uh, and, and that happens a lot. And, and that's okay. I can do that. But I've got to recuperate the next night. And so rest mm -hmm. is very important. And I know that sleep is important. Rest is important. And they're two different things. And don't think just because... the. Uh, only when you're on the bed sleeping that that's your rest. You've got to have rest uh, in addition to that. And and the Lord puts that as a priority uh, that we need to rest one day out of out of the year. All right, Sherry has something to say. This just came up so strong in, in my spirit, man. And that is that we need to allow our minds to be at rest. <laughs> And even when people sleep, there are things that are going on in their, in their minds, uh, dreams or, or nightmares or uh, the enemy coming at their thought, uh, their thoughts. And so there has to be time for our minds to be at rest. And the way that, that I quiet my mind is by praying in the spirit. When I start praying in my prayer language, then it begins to quieten my mind. And those thoughts that were there, they they become still. And, and so uh, this is part of, of resting is when when we are resting in our in our mind. Okay. There's another uh, scripture I have. The next one. Uh, what's that? Okay. Exodus, Exodus 31. Verses 16 and 17. I want you to listen to this. The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it for the generations to come as a lasting covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. And he Hallelujah. Did that. God is all powerful. He is all powerful. He, he, he can't increase in power. He's, he has, he has all it power. all. Yeah. And yet he needed to be refreshed. And you think, oh, do you not need to be refreshed? I think that applies to all of us. God, who is all powerful, needed rest and to be refreshed. And that's what he got on the seventh day. I mean, so he could have. Uh, work six days, and so the work week, and so the week could have been six days, and then he could uh, turn right around and done it again and work six more days, and so he would have established a six day week. Well, what did God do? He knew he needed seven days, he needed a day of rest and refreshing. Woo! That's important for all of us. Do you take a day of mm -hmm. rest? 
and refreshing. Uh, and I, I want to tell you how uh, the, the Jews, uh, basically how they celebrate the Sabbath day, or how they rest, uh, that, you know, in Genesis, it said the evening and the morning, okay, was the first day. It started in the first day. So they begin their Sabbath rest about 18 minutes before sunset. Uh, 18 minutes before sunset, and then they have a, a service. They uh, they uh, talk about the Bible, and then they have just a quiet time at night. Then they sleep. Well, and they may also, or they would be eating in there probably someplace. Okay, and then the next morning, uh, they uh, they get up and they have a service, uh, and of course they have their meals and. And, and they're basically not doing work. That, that's that's mm -hmm. what their rest is. They might spend time uh, fellowshipping with the family and friends. They may play games, uh, the different things, but they're not working. And that goes all the way to the sunset of the next day. Um, and, and so that's what the day of rest that they, and how they uh, apply it. And so you can think in that terms as well, that you need a day of rest. That's what he said, because Jesus said, it's to serve you. The rest, the day of rest, the Sabbath, the day of rest is to serve you. And God blesses it. And mm -hmm. oh, glory to God. He makes it holy. So it's a, you, you might think, well, what kind of a holy activity could I do? Well, you can rest, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's holy, and you're blessed when you rest, and, and uh, the Old Testament talked about four uh, sins uh, that were punishable by death, four things mm -hmm. punishable by mm -hmm. death. One was adultery, one was uh, murder, uh, one was having rebellious children, rebellious children, Oh wow! and the fourth was breaking the Sabbath breaking oh, the sabbath oh, that okay now how does that apply to us today because nobody's going to come out and stone us if we if we uh if we break the sabbath if we don't mm -hmm. rest uh, nobody's going to come out and stone us but they mm -hmm. did in the old testament but what it means for us is that we're killing ourselves if we don't rest oh wow we're killing ourselves. see i just told you about the uh, preacher he was in the in the hospital laying there and i had tubes in him and and uh and the doctor said, you're dying. And he asked the Lord about it. And the Lord said, you're killing yourself because you're not resting. You've brought this on yourself. You're not resting. Okay. Now, let me tell you another story uh, that I heard a minister. Mm -hmm. uh, and he had uh, built a big church and having all these services. And he got down to the point, he's just so weary. And he's weary in his mind. And he couldn't think about what to do. And so he went to his elders and they said, well, you'll take some weeks off. And they, they told him they agreed to so many weeks off. And so he, uh, he spent quite a bit of that sac Sabbath rest. It was Sabbath, a sabbatical. So he took a sabbatical for several weeks. And uh, the last part of it, he was on a cruise in Alaska. And, and then one day he woke up and he said, oh, I'm back to normal. I'm back to myself. And, and, he, and he told the Lord that he said, mm -hmm. I'm back to myself. And he said, and the Lord asked him, well, what day is this? And he said, the 53rd day of my sabbatical rest. And he said, see, you've, you've owed 52 days of a year of rest. Mm -hmm. So every week, one day out of the week is a day of rest. One day out of the week. In the year, there are 52 weeks. So he owed 52 weeks of rest, 52 52 days. days of rest uh, for a year. And and, and uh, the man said, oh, Lord, do I owe you 52 days? Did I owe you 52 days of rest? And he said, no, you owe yourself. Mm -hmm. You owed yourself. It was killing you mm -hmm. uh, when you didn't rest. And, and, and he got back to himself when he had rested appropriately. Now, I'm not suggesting that uh, you need to uh, have... 52 days of rest, whatever the Lord says. Mm. But but I'm saying start this week. Take a day of rest. Uh, and you might say, well, I, I'm a mother and I have children. I have a, a food I, I have to prepare. 
figure it out. You need a day of rest. You need mm -hmm. a day of rest. Yeah, uh, you know. Well, let me say this okay. uh, just to to uh, clarify what Brother Fred just said, uh, because we uh, we all have things that we I have to do uh, to function in this life, and as as a mother or as a worker or, uh, but. That rest that Brother Fred is talking about is being with the Lord, hearing the Lord, uh, setting a time uh, apart uh, from your family or from your work situation so that you can just sit in the presence of the Lord and, and let your, your spirit rest, your mind rest, your body rest. And, and so... Um, I don't think that Brother Fred is saying neglect, neglect uh, your your daily activities. Uh, what he's saying is that find a time to to be with the Lord. It's important to rest. It's important to rest. And you can just get to the point where you're so tired that sleep doesn't cause you to recover. Mm -hmm. See. Uh, it's okay if you go out there and you work hard and then you need to sleep and you have to and you lay down and you sleep at night and 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 you're refreshed but what if you go day after day and you're always weary always tired see that's going to lead mm -hmm. to a spirit of tiredness uh and, and it, it opens the door really to demonic mm -hmm. attack against your body against your mind. sickness and disease yeah it opens the door to, to everything you need uh, a day of rest per week. Uh, that's the way God set it up, and it and it's it's not it's not robbing God. It's robbing yourself of your well being uh, if you're not resting and not having a, a restoration of your body and your mind and your soul. Uh, so this is a really important concept, right, and yes. I encourage you all to rest, uh, to take time to rest, well, schedule a rest, um, schedule yourself and say, I'm not going to mm -hmm. work on this particular day, set some time apart. There's a final verse I, I want uh, Sherry to read, and, and it's, it's kind of interesting, causes us to think that the land, see, God told uh, Produce on the land six day, six years, and the seventh year, let it lie idle. It needs rest. Land needs rest. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that's very interesting because our bodies are called earthen vessels. vessels. You hear that? Earthen vessels. Mm -hmm. And the land and the earth needs its oh, rest. That's good, right? And uh, there, there were the Israelites... Uh, were rebellious against God, and and eventually they were called carried off, and I guess uh, the Jews, and they were carried off to a, another nation. And he said, "You're going to be gone for seventy years, but after seventy years, uh, I, I'm going to restore uh, my people back to their homeland." And, and what was interesting, he said uh, that it was based on the number of years that they had not given the land rest. And so how many years? Uh, well, 70 years times seven, uh, that's like 490 years that they had robbed the land of rest. And, and yet it's not going to be that way. God is going, going to take the people into captivity and they will only be restored back to their back to their homeland when the land has its 70 years of rest. I want you to read this. This is listen uh, to it. Second Chronicles 36, verse 21. This is when they were taken out of the land for 70 years. And those who escaped from the sword, he carried away to Babylon, where they became servants to him and his sons, until the rule of the king, kingdom of Persia to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, watch this as a restraint until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. Does that 
Is that interesting to you? The land enjoyed, enjoyed her Sabbaths. Sabbaths. Woo! And your body mm -hmm. is earthen vessel. Don't wouldn't it enjoy its rest? Yeah. He's saying here this captivity, being carried to captivity, and and the length of the time is so the land can enjoy its rest. Mm, amen. It, it, amen. Rest is more important than you could imagine. Amen. And you cannot just keep running on fumes. You've got to have real uh, energy in your car. You've got to have real energy in your Here. body. That's right. That's it, right. This is an important message. And I hope that you are not running on fumes uh, so that you don't have the energy uh, to do what God has in store for you. I mean, God has great things in store for all of you. And, and so I encourage you to, to rest now. This week, take some time. Mm -hmm. Take some time. I'll designate a day. This is a day. I'm not going to work. And this week, in the coming week, I'm going to spend time with the Lord. I'm going to rest. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not sleep all day. It's rest. I, yeah, I, made that, I, that. I made that clear earlier. Sleep and rest are two different things, although sleep is a part, but you, you need rest. And like Sherry said, you need to spend some time with the Lord. So thank you for being here tonight. And uh, I, I, this message is helpful for me. I hope it will be helpful for you. And I'm going to turn it over to Sherry.